What's up everybody? Jonathan here. Someone may have sent you this video. If they have, congratulations. I'm about to explain to you why raising the minimum wage might not be the best idea. On the opening, please realize that your friend truly does care about the poor, as do I, and realize that there are some solid economical reasons behind why we have this position, and before we get into any poisoning the well, let me state for the record that I don't watch Fox, I don't vote Republican, and I thought Bush was nearly illiterate and certainly incompetent when it came to the economy. You said? Okay. Let me begin, begin by just stating some obvious facts up front. Both of us like everyone to be happy and make a good amount of money. Heck, us conservatives would love to see everyone be millionaires. Now, liberals would love to see all these millionaires stripped of their money, predicated merely on the notion that they must have made their millions through cheating and theft, even if they got rich through completely legal and honest means. And some of these millionaire liberals who push for higher taxes to take money from the rich refuse to give money of their own to the government. But I digress. Now, these minimum wage arguments generally tend to go in three different directions and often center around Walmart. So let's do the three birds with one stone thing. First, there's the argument that everyone needs a livable wage. Second, there's the argument that Walmart is greedy and can afford to pay their workers more. This is more of an emotional argument, but I'll address it anyways. Finally, there's the argument that Walmart workers are among the largest group of people subsidized by the government and that Walmart needs to pay its workers more instead of relying on the government to cover the rest of these people's expenses and needs. So let's look at these things one by one. The first argument, everyone needs to make a livable wage. More importantly, the argument tends to revolve around the idea that people morally deserve a livable wage. So let's get totally real here for a moment. The idea of a livable wage is a nice one, for sure, but unless you can provide an argument for a natural law, that determines that the initiation and exchange of money and product and services somehow magically makes one person dependent upon the other, this argument falls flat on its face. Livable wage rhetoric comes from what I describe as a paternalistic mindset of, of treating people like children and trying to take care of them instead of letting them be adults. We live in the realm of adults. This is an adult world. There is no moral argument whatsoever that Walmart is responsible for paying a worker anything more than what their work is worth. If they want to be generous, then it's entirely laudable for them to pay their workers above that price. But there's no shame for them to be economical with their hiring and payment, any more than there's shame on you for choosing to shop at Walmart for their low, low prices. You paid, right? For this? Yeah. If you hire your sibling to clean your room for $5, for instance, you're not obligated to ensure that they can afford proper living conditions. I mean, why would you imagine that financial transactions in an adult suddenly get that burden. On a purely philosophical level, the idea of a livable wage being owed to someone, a worker per se, falls completely flat. Ah, uh, you might say, what about the practical? I'm glad you asked. Practically speaking, the minimum wage when it first started was just 25 cents an hour, worth just over $4 an hour today. Practically speaking, raising the minimum wage has been statistically shown to reduce the employment of those who need minimum wage jobs the most, the unskilled and the youth. People who depend on these jobs as, get, as a way to get a foothold into the jobs market. Practically speaking, government intervention is what led to the recession. And practically speaking, the best thing we can do to help people is to prevent the government from interfering in the economy rather than inviting even more of a failed policy. Finally, some people like to complain about how large numbers of Walmart workers are receiving benefits through food stamps and other subsidies paid for by the taxpayer. Understand that forcing Walmart to pay its workers enough to take them off these subsidies doesn't actually eliminate the charity to these workers. It just moves said charity from the taxpayer to the shopper. Businesses pass down their expenses. It's what they do. It's the only way they manage to stay in business. Now consider Walmart's tagline, low prices. Low prices. Not high prices, not high quality, not rich people shop here. No, everyday low prices. Who are you passing the charity onto? Certainly there are well-to-do people who shop at Walmart, but there are also the unemployed and people on food stamps and some people who are in financial trouble or are living just off their bank account. These people end up footing the bill and quite a large portion of it because I guarantee you if you are forced to shop at Walmart due to your financial situation, you're not going to be hitting up Outback Steakhouse anytime soon. The crazy part is if you can only afford to shop at Walmart for your, your goods, then, you, then your cost of living revolves around that store for a large part, meaning that any change in prices at that store is going to hit you the hardest. 
Personally, I'm not a fan of taking money from the poor to help the poor. It tends to be a little counterproductive. In short, raising the minimum wage is paternalistic and treats people like children. It encourages government meddling in the economy, which has proven disastrous, and it helps one group of people while hurting another. But there's good news. There is an option. Right now, the government is putting out thousands of regulations every single year. Uh, and while a tiny portion of them are arguably viable, the vast majority of them are senseless, redundant, state the obvious, or in the worst case, are downright hurtful. By the way, I'm going to put a link down in the description so you can see some of the ridiculous regulations that are out now and understand just how bad some of these things are. During a turned-down economy, the government is raising taxes and pushing out actually a record number of regulations. And then they scratch their heads and wonder at the fact that businesses are having a hard time recovering. So let's try something new. Let's try telling the government to back off for a change. And instead of giving businesses you know, reason to, to fret and worry about what regulation is going to come out next and what tax is going to come out next during a recession, give them some breathing room and give new chances, of business, you know, new chances to businesses to start up and give employees a chance to get jobs that pay them what they're worth. Hopefully that gives you some idea of why, we stand, why you know, libertarians and conservatives tend to fall on this side of the minimum wage debate. And I hope I've convinced you, and if I have or if you agree with me and you have a friend who needs convincing, send them this link, uh, this video. I can't promise you that I'll convince them, but I will give it a go. And if you like what you heard, you can follow me on Twitter at Yay Capitalism. I release podcasts uh, like bi-weekly and I talk about all manner of political topics and I make fun of a lot of people who don't make a whole lot of sense. All right. It's a lot of information to process, but I got faith in you. Peace. This really dries up the throat like a lot. It's still rolling. You can't, you can't even start. You can't like – Really? God, these Coke Brother ads are just, they do not pay me enough for this.